Hey everybody, Ryan McCaffrey with IGN. I am joined by my good game development friend, yes. Todd Howard. It's good to see you again. It is good to see you. Uh, we chatted a year ago remotely when you shared some Starfield details with me there. Uh, things that are a little different now because the game is imminent. I played it for about an hour. We just watched, we're recording this the day before, but everybody will have just seen right. the 45 minute Starfield Direct. Uh, there's a lot to get to, Todd. There's a lot going on with this. so. I want to just kind of start at the top and we'll kind of work our way uh, down into more nitty gritty details. Uh, this is the first new IP you've done in a couple of decades now. It's been a little while. So totally new thing. It's the biggest exclusive for Microsoft in a long time. Uh, and it's certainly the biggest thing Microsoft's put out since they acquired Bethesda. So pressure. <laughs> Do you, in all seriousness, like, do you kind of feel any extra pressure compared to any of the other games you've made or you just kind of you kind of focus on what you do I'm just sort of curious if if the stuff that like we talk about in the gaming community is something that goes through your head or gets talked about in the office at all well clearly you know I'm, I'm aware of that you know everything you said um, and compared to our previous games there's always a lot of attention on, on what we do we're, we're very fortunate and but for us it, it's we have put so much into this game, and it is, as you said, you know, our first new IP in over 25 years. It's our first major release in about eight years. Yeah. So for us, we have just put so much into it um, that we're just doing everything we can to make the best game that we can, hope that everybody loves it. So um, we feel we're on, we're on the right track, um, and we're, we're really fortunate, I think, with some of those things you said to get the attention. Yeah. Um, and that there are, we know there's a lot of people out there looking forward to it, and we just view our job as, you know, hey, just do the best job we can do, put everything we can into the game, and I uh, hope everyone loves it. Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. Engines ready. The Frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. So I think the last time we talked, or maybe the time before, I, I gave you a little grief for you, you Babe Ruthie, and you called your shot with 11 11 22 really far in advance. I did. Uh, and I think, I think we were having a little fun about that before the delay. So, it, I mean, it's good. You, we want a better game. We don't want, you know, you to just make sure. the date just to, for the sake of making the date. So just, just out of curiosity, like, how has the extra time been spent specifically with Starfield? Well, look, it's just such a big game. And as you do these things, you know, you, you look, you do your best as it comes to release dates and projections. But given the scale of it, if one thing is off that uh, by a, a percentage, that can that can escalate quickly to, to more time. Um, and we've really spent it most of this year playing the game a ton um, over and over and making sure that, you know, it's balanced, it's as fun as possible, honing systems and interface, obviously bug fixing and all of those things, performance and really getting it where we're really, really um, sure and solid on, on what we're putting out there for everybody. Well, speaking of performance, uh, Xbox gamers went through a little, a little uh, unpleasant surprise with the last big Bethesda exclusive not too long ago with, with Redfall and you know that maybe not performing on console on the Series X, kind of how we'd hoped. So just, I, I think really all we're looking for is not necessarily everything's got to be 4K 60 or 120 frames, but just sure. kind of Nobody likes surprises, you know, when it comes to the game that they're going to buy, how it performs, how it feels. Now, your games have always been these just boundary pushing, envelope pushing, huge open detailed worlds. They've been 30 frames per second on console traditionally. So just, I'm going to just turn it over for you to sec for, for a second here. Just, just lay out, just so that nobody is surprised come September 6th. Sure. What are we looking at on, if I'm gonna play this on a Series X, or even if you wanna mention Series S as well, like what's, what's the experience gonna be, technically speaking? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. You know, it's, I think it'll come as no surprise, given our previous games, what we go for are always these huge open worlds, fully dynamic, hyper detail where anything can happen. And we do wanna do that. You know, it's 4K in the X, it's 1440 on the S. We do lock it at 30. Because yeah. we want that fidelity, we want all that stuff. We don't want to sacrifice any of it. Fortunately, in this one, we've got it running great. It's often running way above that, sometimes it's 60. But on the consoles, we do lock it because 
we prefer the consistency. Yeah. Right? We are not even thinking about it. And we're not, we don't ever want to sacrifice that experience that makes our games, you know, really, really special. So it um, feels great. We're really happy with how it feels, even in the heat of battle. And we need that headroom because, you know, in our games, really anything can happen. Speaking of tweaking and, and uh, optimizing, uh, there were some rumors going around uh, that id Software was helping you guys out with the combat, with tuning combat. I'm just curious, was there any truth to that at all? There, they did not help us with the combat. Well, first of all, I'd say, you know, being in the company, knowing the folks at id Software for a long time, I'm like a huge Doom yeah. fan. I mean, they, Doom, know, they know what they're doing. I like that's they're, why I ask. They're, they're the absolute know, best. Um, Doom awesome. Eternal is one of my favorite games. And so with Fallout 4, they did give us a few tips on how to handle okay. combat. Yeah. But in Starfield, you know, we redid the combat um, ourselves, and it's really feeling great. But it has helped us really on, more on the graphic. They've helped us on the graphics side. Oh, nice. So when we get into, like, you know, motion blur, that it's just how the game feels smooth. Some other things that they do in id Tech that we wanted to bring over into Creation Engine 2, and they helped us do that. And, you know, it's great. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice... Nice uh, neighbor to have down the street. That you it can is, go and I love and ask for some some uh, milk and sugar, right? And I'm such a fan <laughs> of what they do. So being able to get an early look at what they're doing next, I'm not here to talk about that. But it's just oh, it's I mean, impossible. feel free to talk about nah, that. Nah, I mean, if nah, you want. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm curious, given you mentioned that it's it's going to be just shy of eight years between shipping Fallout Four. Yeah. And, and shipping Starfield, which to my knowledge is the longest that you've ever gone between shipping games that you've directed. That I've, yes. Yeah. Well, obviously we had 76 in between, but it's something that I've directed, yes. Yeah. That is the longest. So, can you kind of, I'm just curious about the, what was your initial vision for Starfield and how that's either stayed true and borne out or evolved over the course of eight years? That's a great question. I will say this, that the game sticks to the original vision. Um, that took longer than I wanted. You know, but I'd say about halfway through the project, you realize this is why nobody tries to make this game. <laughs> um, so it's been a, you know, when you do these things and you take some risks and you're really ambitious, that can be a very windy path sometimes is how I'd say it. But um, it, it is true to the vision we had for our type of role-playing game set in space and where your mind kind of goes. And we want to, as much as possible, say yes to the player. Like, can I do this? Can I do this? Yes, 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 yes. Um, and space is big. So the amount of content that we ended up making to have that really feel authentic to that, um, that, that did grow yeah. and, and grow from where we originally started. I mean, so, you know, neither one of us is, is getting younger. We've, we've both been doing our respective that things for true. a while. Yeah. So, like, are you okay with things taking eight years again on, on, in the future? Or? Not my plan. I don't think you would ever, ever <laughs> plan for that. Um, you know, sometimes that's how it ends up, so that you know that what you're putting on the screen is what you want. Um, but you're right, I'm not getting younger. You sort of start you know, like how many games I probably do you have, have left in you? Yeah, how many how many games are ahead of me? Yeah, um, versus behind me, and so that does start to enter your head. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. Would you point to any other games as inspiration for Starfield along the way? I mean, not in the literal sense of oh, I want to do what they did, but in terms of of like giving you giving the player a feeling that like something that you know a game you played. Uh, that, that you really wanted to hmm. convey. Like, I mean, when you first showed the, me this game a while back, I mean, I certainly was reminded of Elder Scrolls and Fallout. To, I mean, there's the DNA is there, but I, the other, I would say, two non-Bethesda games that I got little little vibes from were No Man's Sky and Mass Effect. Well, clearly, those other games that are science fiction, I think you might look at and say, okay, this is science fiction, it's like that. I think the minute to minute, obviously on the ground, it has similarities to Elder Scrolls and Fallout and the things that we've made and how it feels in your hands or some, some certain mechanics. But believe it or not, it's the games that, that put you in a world, that transport you to a place. So I think it, it probably also as a flow probably has more 
of a feeling of like a Red Dead 2, right? Like I'm living the Western fantasy. Yeah. And so in this, you are you're living this science fiction explorer fantasy, and sometimes that's being on a barren planet and nothing is going on. Or an old West town, like we saw that in the in the direct, kind right? Of old or West inspired and, and, and all of that. So. For me, it's games that where I feel I am rooted in the reality of this universe of the game, and everything else kind of disappears. Uh, there was, like, I mean, as people have now seen, there was a lot in the in the direct in the, the 45 minutes that were covered. Uh, a big takeaway for me was uh, that for everything we saw, there was just sort of these hints of. Constellation, and that seems to be who the, the main story is going to yeah. revolve around. But it, separate from that, or, or kind of, I guess, uh, adjacent to that, it seems like there's so much to do in this game that if, are, are, are we going to be, are you going to be okay if players just don't end up really necessarily even paying much attention to the main story and just end up kind of doing their own thing out, out there? or? or are you going to kind of are you taking kind of greater pains to make sure that people want to stay and, and get through that main path before they get back out to the, the wild space frontier? It's a good question. I view our job as giving people the menu. Yeah. Here are the things you yeah. can do, and it it is a very it's a very large game. Obviously, there's a lot there's a lot to it. Um, it's it can be complicated at times. And we have found, though, that the gaming audience, in particular our fans, they want to they they want to have all those options. And I do think more than than anything we've done, I really believe this: that the more you give to Starfield, the more it gives back to you. Um, and that was one of our goals. And so, um, I I do hope people play the main quest, and I hope people do this. But most of all, I want them ultimately to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. I, mean, I know you don't want to give away a lot about about the main storyline, certainly, and people don't want to have that spoiled for them. But what I would be curious of, given again the the scale and scope of this that the direct conveyed, and that I barely scratched the surface of when when I was playing a little while ago, of these thousand planets, uh, of all this stuff you've got going on, how much of of it will the main story lead you towards? Like, you know what I mean? Like, because you probably want to show as as much of the diversity and as much of the as many of the cool places that your team worked really hard on over the course of the campaign. But you can't show everything. You can't lead them up to a thousand right. different planets, right? We want to keep it sort of you know manageable. That's what I would say in the main quest. So we obviously we hit some high points, but not even you know it's still a small fraction, like you're saying, to what's in the game. Um, and for us, like a main quest, we want it to sort of pay off. There are people that that do want to come to a game, do the main story, and feel that okay, I've won. I can now yeah. do something else. I think that's okay too. Um, but we've also learned. Look, we're sitting here. It's 12 years after Skyrim. We're looking at a game that has over 60 million copies, and all these people playing it. And they're still playing it. Um, and so we have learned we need to build in from the beginning a game that has this long-term play thought of. So um, that you know, for, hopefully, you know, people are playing Starfield a long time from now. Well, you know, on that note, uh, you guys have always done post-release content. You know, yeah. You've had like major, paid, bigger expansions. You've had smaller-scale stuff. I I can't imagine that. You'd, you'd even want to necessarily expand this game geographically <laughs> moving forward because there's already a ton there. So, like, I know you're not here to just give away your, your announce your post-release plan, but, like, conceptually, how are you thinking about it given the, that this is like a, a giant universe rather than just a, a continent like in, like in Cyrodiil and in an Elder Scrolls game? Right, it's a great question. I mean, look, we're going to be doing um, a lot of add-on content for Starfield. We love doing it. Um, our fans love it. We will have announced sort of the first one that's going to... Um, not. Our, we're going to do a story expansion pack um, that's going to be coming. We, our plan is to do things of varying sizes, mm -hmm. um, and, and we've done a lot of that in our previous games, so it's something that, that we really like doing, our fans like. So despite the size of the game, there's still things we want to add as far as features in the future and stories and things like that. So um, we, we think this is going to gain, hopefully, it's going to continue for a long time that way.
At, at the end of the direct, we heard from a bunch of folks on your team about their favorite, uh, their favorite moments that they've had while playing. Can you paint me a specific picture of a memorable moment for a character that you've rolled that you've been playing in recent months? Like some, some just memorably cool scenario. Let's see, just a few weeks ago, I landed on one of the early planets and this sandstorm blew through and I went to run away from it and this, you know, ships can randomly, once in a while they can randomly land, like enemy ships can land. So I'm going through the sandstorm, the ship landed and I get in this firefight and I board, I like got on the ship and while I'm shooting the guys on the surface of the planet and the ship, the ship took off into space. So now I'm in outer space <laughs> on the ship and I was just like, can that happen? I guess that can happen. Yeah. Um, I, one of my favorite moments from Oblivion, which I've told you many times, is my favorite game of yours. I just, that's, that's the one that I have the most positive memories with, um, is, was randomly finding a unicorn in the that forest. That is a very, yes, you can do that there. So, <laughs> I, are there like 50 of those kinds of things? There's a in good this number. Game where there's, there's a just lot. In stuff that's not a quest, that's not, that's, you'll just randomly happen upon this this memorable special I don't game. want to spoil what they are but yeah of course we, we love that stuff and um, we have some really really special ones in this game that I think uh, I'm very curious to see how long after the game is out you know that people discover it yeah now you mentioned Skyrim and uh, the, you know tens and tens of millions of copies of that in the, the, the sort of historic runaway train that that thing's been I mean, you, you probably can't count on that level of success no. again, necessarily. No. No. So what, like, what does success look like for you with this game? That's a good question because with Game Pass, we're obviously going to be bringing in, you know, probably the biggest audience that, that we've had for a launch. Um, and so it just makes you really fortunate to know that you can take these kind of risks with a game like this and be ambitious, but still know that um, it's going to get in a lot of people's hands. So, I mean, I think for us it is that, you know, people say they love the game. And they, I think all games go through a couple phases. Like you have this phase where the game isn't out yet. What do people think of it? Then yeah. there's like, what do they think of it the first week it comes out? But then you got to think about what do they think after a year? What do they think after year two? And so um, I hope that, you know, it, it sort of stands the test of time, like, like our other games. I don't focus on, like, the number of users yeah. in, in that way. But I guess you can't really design for a game that will stand the test of time, right? You just have to, to do, do your best you, and hope that it, hope that you, it you works do your, out. That is very true. <laughs> you do the absolute best that you can do. Um, again, the whole team is just, we have really poured ourselves in this one over a lot of years. And, uh, you know, you cross your fingers, you do everything you can. There are systems you can design that say, hey, look, this system is going to work over a long-term play, over yeah. hundreds of hours, like a character system versus, yeah, after 30, you've burned through everything. Um, that's certainly not the case here. It's clearly not, based on what I've seen so far. Uh, the Thousand Planets number is the, the big one that you've been throwing out. What's like? What's the ratio of, of the like procedurally generated stuff to the handcrafted stuff? Well, the planets themselves, the landscapes, you know, pretty much all procedural. We mm -hmm. kind of make these large, like think like kilometer sized tiles we've generated, and those yeah. get kind of wrapped around the planet. Um, as far as handcrafted content, more than any game we've done, um, I. I've stopped giving out numbers, <laughs> um, but you know, just in the dialogue, it's more, it's more than our last, it's more than Skyrim and Fallout 4 combined, just in dialogue, right? So as we get into locations and art and everything, um, we, we've done more of it than, we, than we've ever done. Wow. Uh, is it reasonable to suggest that if Starfield is as awesome as, and successful as we all hope it is, that as gamers, is it reasonable to think that, that a, a Starfield 2 is 10 plus years away because I'm, and the reason I bring this up, not to <laughs> not to bring it back to like, you know, how much how much time do we all have left? But you have always kept. It's going to get depressing. No, I hope not. Okay. But you've always kept your team clearly on purpose as as one team. 
Bethesda Game Studios, your your team, you know, and, and you had been alternating between Elder Scrolls and, and then once you acquired it, Fallout, and you've gone back and forth. And now you've had this eight year Starfield yeah. thing in here. You've already committed to Elder Scrolls Six is the next thing. You mm -hmm. said it's in pre production. And then last year when we talked, you said, yep, Fallout 5, I want to do that, that'll be next. That was more of like a general, it will clearly be after <laughs> Elder Scrolls 6 at some point. Okay, That's well, like, let me clarify that one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> at some point in the future. <laughs> but, so, okay, so, but if... Like Elder Scrolls 6 is the next one. Yeah, but if, so if, if Starfield's awesome, and you want to do another one, and the team wants to do another one, and the company wants another one, is it, it sounds like it's probably going to be a while. I don't have a great answer for you there. Um, <laughs> it's an astute observation. I mean, I'm not trying to get the, you to unveil the roadmap. Like, I'm just, cause, because again, you've, you've kept your team smaller. You know, you, you have, uh, to date, not, like, grown a second team within the studio, unless, unless you have, and that's... Well, we have what I would call, you know, a, a, a full-size group team on 76 still. Right. Updating that game, it's doing great, very fortunate. Um, but you're right in that it, we have gotten bigger. We have four studios. We have the one in Rockville, we have Montreal, we have Austin, we have Dallas. So we yeah. have gotten bigger to handle all of this. We work with a lot of partners on stuff. Um, but that doesn't speed things up necessarily, right? You need a certain size. We're relatively small comparatively right. um, to do these things. And I think if we look at Skyrim, again, not the plan to have an Elder Scrolls 6 this far after Skyrim, but in today's day, um, people are playing these games for longer. So True. our ability, like we talked about, to support Starfield, whereas maybe in the old days you would put it out and then you'd go on to a sequel, now we can support that game for a much longer period of time, which is what our plan is. And then as we look to like an Elder Scrolls 6, that is one where like, I probably shouldn't say this, but if I do the math, I am not getting any younger. How long do people play in Elder Scrolls for? That may be the last one I do. I don't know. The last Elder Scrolls. The last Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I yeah. don't know. I mean, I, I do the math as a, as a gamer, and it's like, am I even going to be playing Elder Scrolls 6 on the Series X? Or am I going to be playing that on the next thing? Because it's, that's, those are the, it's crazy how long these, trip, the games that you make, they, yeah, they take I, a long time. I oh. wish they did. I, mean, I wanted them to be <laughs> faster, but that, Speed isn't the goal. Right. right. Or should it the be? The goal is, hey, what's the product? What's the vision? How do we do this? And how do we continue, continue to support the ones that we currently have? Because we have millions of people playing Fallout 4, millions of playing 76, Skyrim. So it's about, you know, hopefully have that with Starfield. You had told me last year that you, you, know, you want to direct Fallout 5, like that you want that to be your game at some point down the road. Is but now with with the Microsoft, Bethesda, Xbox Game Studios family getting a lot bigger, you know, you you did work with Obsidian years ago with New Vegas. Is could any of the games that that you and your team have created, any of these three franchises, would you you know make that? Would you want to work with any of them potentially on something in the future? I mean, there's always there's a, I can't say never to to, to any of that, you know. For us, it is what's going to get us the best product. Yeah. Um, how do we stay focused? I think there's a lot of times where you can get you can get unfocused and try to do too many things at once, and then they don't end up necessarily the way you want. And so, if I look at other franchises or I look at entertainment in general, I haven't noticed like the time gap between things being a negative. Right. Right. They can be a negative when you think about it and you make a calendar. Yeah. Hey, when well, Starfield like, 2. Like, look at Grand Theft Auto. Like exactly. That hasn't suffered in the Or, um, you know, the gaps between, I think Half-Life 3 will do fine. Right? So, <laughs> um, so even though in the moment, like, how do I, how do I bring that closer to reality today? Because I, I want to play it. Um, those gaps, these are still evergreen franchises yeah. that I think when they come, it's about just doing it right. Well, that's, and that's what we as gamers want yeah. to hear too, certainly. Um, so Starfield, we, I played an hour, it felt like three minutes, there was, and, and you were like hustling me along to different save files, like, go look at this, go look at this. 
what's the character you're playing now? Because you've got the you've got the traits, you've got the background. So like, what's your what are you maining right now? Well, I try to do it all. Um, right now, I'm digging deep on spaceships. So, I mean, you could say in some respects, this is like five or six games in one, right? It's the spaceship game, it's a on the ground game, it's a, just a dialogue game, it's an yeah. outpost game, it's a crafting game. It's, it does all of these things. Um, and so, and, and it always is tricky for us to get a good game flow where you, those things don't feel like they're separate games, that they can weave in and out of them right in a way that is holistically creates something, you know, greater than the sum of its parts. What a view! It's a feast for the eyes! Off we go! To another adventure! To help contextualize Starfield for, for players before they get the chance to play it themselves, what's the feeling that you try to give people with Elder Scrolls? What's the feeling that you try to give people with Fallout? And what's the feeling that you try to give players with this? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good question. I would say if you think about, you know, Elder Scrolls with a fantasy world, who would you want to be and what would you want to do? We want to provide that. Yeah. Uh, and then Fallout, the same thing in a post-apocalyptic environment. How does that factor into the things you find? And how does crafting is very unique in Fallout when it comes to that? Or what's the vibe of the people? What are they sacrificing to stay alive? Or, and, I th and then when you get to Starfield and science fiction, same sort of thing where if you were to open it up and you could do anything, how are we providing that experience? And we love exploration, so when you get into a game like this, that's what people say, why do you have a thousand planets? Because we'd rather give you the option to do that than say no. Yeah. Um, and so I think if people drift toward fantasy, they're gonna love it. You know, they're gonna stick with Elder Scrolls. They, if they like post-apocalyptic, they go to fall. They like science fiction. We hope that Starfield fills that kind of desire to play that kind of thing. With Starfield. Todd Howard, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, Starfield out September 6th. Series X, Series S, PC. Uh, looking forward to playing a heck of a lot more pretty soon. Todd, thank you so much. Thank you.